Welcome everyone to PRT, Paranormal Roundtable. I'm your host, Josh Turner, also known as Wolf. With me today is Tony. Yep, yep, yep. I'm here as well. Yep. As always. Oh, I'm sorry. Mushu. Yeah. I'm happy. He you wants to it. be called Chinese food for whatever reason. Is that Chinese food? Oh, it is Chinese Mushu food. Mushu is a Chinese. Yeah. You didn't get the comments on the YouTube? I did, but I just kind of like, I was like, is, I was thinking too, like, is it really Chinese food? But Mushu I forget like a really that since I was Chinese. raised. Oh, well, that's. I guess we can introduce oh, our guest. That's Zane. Zane yeah, is we our guest. Introduce our guest. My now, yeah. nephew just moved back from Connecticut, and he is uh, Diablo's son. Hello, hello. And he will be joining us in the studio today. It, he may come on every now and then. Hi, my name is Zane. And so we uh, we, we, we were going to introduce him, but then he just started babbling, talking like right. his like his dad, my like brother. They just like to talk. Anyways, so what we're going to get into today is some dog man. We have some uh, some stories that I wanted to get into. Do you want to give the email? Yeah, it's uh, doswolfman88 at gmail.com. doswolfman88 at gmail.com. Send us your stories. So what what, what I wanted to talk about. So- All right, and Oh, well, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I was also going to mention the website, which is prtpodcast.com. Mm-hmm. Please check it out. Uh, we have some guys that uh, are, we, we have a little art gallery we have our merch store up there. We have a couple of real interesting things. We have all of our episodes on there. If you want to check it out there too, it's just yeah. Uh, get you a, get you a hoodie because winter's almost over. So I don't know about that, but hopefully we might have another month or so of really cold weather. But get you a hoodie. Yeah, get I'm, you some t-shirts. Just buy up a bunch of stuff. Uh, uh, and if you're fit, get you a nice fitted tank. <laughs> so, so what you need is to go and get you a PRT shirt, Paranormal Roundtable. We got a couple different designs. Anthony helped design those. So anybody that wants to represent PRT, we have mugs, we have phone cases, phone things cases, like that. we have stickers, we have yeah, all stickers and whatever. For I'm actually to... still waiting for my hoodie. It hasn't come in yet. I know. Well, that's not. It hasn't been ordered. That's Anthony's fault. Oh, well, Anthony ordered it. I'm waiting on it. No, he didn't. He's he shaking didn't order his head. It? No, he's like, I didn't order Jeez, that for you, Anthony. I've been waiting all this time. So you're like, what is going on? <laughs> well, Scorpion and D and me got ours, but Uh-oh. I guess Tony and I is important. Yeah. Kind of like a flashlight thing. You didn't well, I mean, I made one myself. I kind of just grabbed the white T-shirt and wrote PRT on it, but I guess I'll have to do. And then, he, and then he goes to the Whataburger and he's like, "Yeah, I see you looking at my shirt. And they're like, N- not really. Yeah. No, I saw you looking at my shirt. You know what PRT means? And they're like, they're like did you, I, I really did you don't care. you forget how to spell part? I it's mean, come on. They're like, I really don't care. You do care. It, it means Paranormal <laughs> Roundtable. I'm actually the co-host of that show. And the person in line's all nervous and like, are, are you going to hurt me? Tony's like, no, I'm just going to make you really uncomfortable. No, I just want a burger. You know, thanks for paying. I'm just going to sit here and make you uncomfortable. I'm going to stare at you and make you uncomfortable, and you should know my voice. Listen to it, and I want recognition in your eyes. Yes. (laughs) Folks, we have 7,000 subscribers now. Sorry. Uh, 7,000 subscribers isn't a lot, but we are getting a lot of views on the videos and stuff. And so I want to encourage everyone to subscribe. I've talked to people recently who literally thought that subscribing on YouTube costs money and it actually doesn't. It's free. So if you could just go and hit the subscribe button, hit that bell and you will get notifications when we have new shows. That is paramount to us growing the show on YouTube, which is another way that we can create a revenue stream to help keep the show going because it, we we are still kind of just at this point breaking even and we're trying to to get over the hump so that we can, you know, this will be a little bit profitable for us so that we can continue to produce content because we do have to take off time from our jobs and things like that to do the show. <clears throat> and it takes a lot of work to do a lot of research and I have to talk to a ton of people through messenger, through email, people that I talk to on the phone. If you know who you are, I've interviewed a lot of you out there and your stories so, you know, there's a lot of, uh, of, of different listeners and people who, um, who've sent me their, their stories are really crazy stories. And that being said, I wanted to touch on something real quick before we get into the, the stories today. Um, there is like this big battle going on in the dog man community and I keep getting drug into it and I'm really not on either side because whenever I try to pick up one side or the other, the other side seems to think that I'm on that side, but I'm really not. I believe that they are flesh and blood, but I also believe that there is an ethereal quality to them. I believe that there's some of them are ethereal, but I believe that there's two different things. But I also believe that dogmen themselves are something that we can't really understand. And what I mean by that is like just because they look flesh and blood doesn't mean that they are all the time or that they're, you know, people want to believe that this is just an animal. 
Now, the reason I don't believe it's just an animal is because they're too smart to just be an animal. And I don't believe that an animal is just going to have the upper body of a man with a wolf's head and stand up on its hind legs and run around and do the things that these things do. Yeah. I just have a hard time buying into that. It's it's some type of undiscovered animal species. I've talked to Ken Gerhardt about it, and he was pretty adamant that he didn't believe that, that this was something that could have uh, just been, you know, uh, it just it's just like an animal out there. And I, and I, I tend to, to agree with that, but I also do believe it is flesh and blood because the one I saw was flesh and blood, it didn't vanish or anything. But I don't discount people who have seen these things vanish. So that being said, I'm not in anyone's camp one way or the other. Uh, I've been talking to Ryan Tremblay over at uh, Venomous Fringe, and, and like I, he really believes in the flesh and blood. And Ryan's a really nice guy. I don't have a problem with him. And I don't want, you know, Ryan, if you're listening, I don't want you to think that I'm against you or anything because I have kind of said a couple things in, in the group that I just don't totally agree with the whole 100% physical. They do too many things that just don't make any, like, don't make any sense. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and if you get as many stories as we do about these creatures and if you've been around them as long as we have in my hometown and everything, people aren't really in the, they don't really believe in, in the whole flesh and blood 100%. They just think that there's some sort of supernatural phenomena that happens. And, but, but I don't agree with going around calling them werewolves either because that has this connotation to it that some dude's changing in the full moon and running around, breaking into people's houses and eating up their, you know. It's very Hollywood. Very yeah. Hollywood, yeah. yeah. And, and, but then the, then the term dog man makes it sound like some kind of circus freak. Yeah, it takes see the incredible of, dog man. You know, like takes just, the ferociousness out of the name of what of what these creatures truly are. Yeah, and uh, you know, I mean, I don't want to say like I'm neutral, but I, I, I just believe I, I have no way to disprove either side. So why you know, cut off the like the possibility of it being either flesh and blood or spiritual? And yeah. I, I choose to remain until like I because I haven't seen one myself personally. I've never had an experience and I'm not hoping I never do because that's not something I want to take with me. But, um, I mean, I, I truly do have the belief that it's, that they're, you know, a mixture of both that it's possible to see some that are flesh and blood and people who have those encounters and they see it and it, and it traumatizes them. But then there's some who also see them in a, in a spiritual sense and it traumatizes them just as much. So, you know, I, I just don't think it's fair if we're just like, Oh, you know, you're wrong for seeing what you saw and not interpreting it the correct way. Because then it kind of sounds ignorant, because and it also sounds very dis- dismissive of what their experiences was. You yeah, know? I, don't, I don't think that's fair f- to them because you know th- some of these people are truly traumatized and hurt by what they saw, and it, it really carries a lot of weight in you know their daily actions, and it, it changes their lifestyles in a major way. So I don't, don't want to take a- that away from them and, and make them seem like they're. They, what they saw was incorrect. I never trivialize anyone's exactly. experience. That's what I was like, trying to that, that, That's the thing. I mean, when it comes to dog, man, it is a scary thing. The phenomena that goes along with it, people having nightmares, and it's like it just keeps going. I, I don't, and I, and I people say, well, it was a traumatic experience. But, you know, I've talked to actually a friend of mine who was attacked by a bull, a bull shark, or a tiger shark. And it happened over there off the, off the coast here in, in South Texas, he was attacked by a bull, uh, a tiger shark when he was a young guy, a friend of me and Chiefs, actually. What's crazy is that it, he didn't have nightmares, you know? It, it's, uh, this thing literally attacked him, tried to pull him in the water. Luckily, it was only about six feet, which is still, it's a juvenile, but it was still big enough to, like, scar him up pretty bad for life. But it didn't give him nightmares. Like, I've talked to him about it, and he wasn't like, oh, yeah, I had nightmares for months and months about it. No, but when someone just sees one of these dogmen... It gives them a nightmare. It kind of imprints on them. It imprints on them, yeah. And I've had people that were, had another friend of mine who was knocked off a surfboard by a great white. It did not kill him. I mean, you know, he lived, but it didn't give him a nightmare. And a great white is a terrifying animal. I've had people who were like my cousin, he got gored by a bull and it ripped open his guts and he lived. My cousin Donnie. who's he was a, bull, a bull rider. He was a bull rider, yeah. yeah. And and uh, he's a crazy guy. He's on my Facebook and uh, he didn't have nightmares about it. I mean, you know. Well, I think Donnie's a fierce, you know, example. He's he's always, from what I've heard <laughs> the stories, he's always been kind oh, yeah, of a crazy he's, guy. He's pretty nuts. But, I mean, <laughs> the thing is, you don't uh, get nightmares from these other terrifying animals that attack you. 
But and they say, oh, it's because it's they're so afraid because they see it and it's just weird looking or whatever. Well, that would make sense, wouldn't it? It's very out of the norm. It's very yeah, out do of the norm. The, I mean, being attacked by a shark, at least at some point, you're like, oh, I'm being attacked by a shark. You see this thing. And you're he was like, a little well, kid when he got yeah. attacked. Now, you can imagine being in a shark's mouth. Wouldn't that give you like uh, a nightmare? You would think so. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know many people who've had those. I mean, it's just. Do you think but, it's because they're more known though? Do you think it's well, the that, fear that, of the that, unknown? That's what the pe- the physical people are going to say. Well, it's because it's a known animal, whatever. But when I was a little kid, I mean, when you're a little kid and you see uh, a ghost or something weird and creepy, you don't necessarily have a nightmare about it over and over again. I mean, like my friend Jonathan, when I was a little kid, he had a haunted house and he claimed to have seen a woman on the stairs and playing in his house one day. Something really weird happened. I mean, nothing like real weird, but like a, a the closet kind of opened and a truck r- rolled out of it. Ugh. That was enough for me to not ever go back over there. But like he didn't have like nightmares. He wasn't having nightmares about it. But there's something about the dog man phenomena, the werewolf looking creatures, these upright canines that give people nightmares for years. The one that I saw gave me nightmares for years. And I've been accused of like, oh, you have PTSD from it, so that's why, it did. whatever. I don't know what it was. I didn't think about it every waking moment of my life. It just, I just went on with my life, and then at different times in my life, it would pop back up, and it would be a nightmare. It was almost like it was letting me know that it was still around, <clears throat> and which to me gives it a supernatural quality. It makes me think that this thing was supernatural. It looked flesh and blood. It had manifested as flesh and blood. But it had a supernatural quality to it because me and the guy that that saw it did have nightmares from it. You know, several people in my hometown who've seen these things, they get nightmares from them for years and they feel like they're being stalked by them. Yeah. That's not normal. I know I can tell you right now, that's not normal. I mean, the fact that they will go out of their way to uh, harass people, you know, after they've been seen by them. One of the things that Linda Godfrey reports too is that they don't like being seen. So, like, people always say that. They feel like they did something to offend it by seeing it. And so, because it's been seen, it becomes angry. And they- It's kind of taboo. Yes. They are aggressive. Like, they want you to know, you saw me, now I'm angry. And for years, I've wondered why the one that that was chasing us came after us. Uh, One, I think it wanted to kill us, for one. I I really believe that. and But I think it also because we saw it. Right. Well, I remember I mentioned. I didn't feel like it was hungry, like a predator. I felt like it wanted to kill us to keep us quiet. Yeah, right? I, was, I remember I mentioned like, uh, what if they have their own rules, you know, about being seen, seen, right? And then he was just doing like, oh well, I'm already, I'm already in trouble. Or if he's not already in trouble, he's like, well, I better go kill these people to either mm-hmm. silence them or keep them quiet so that I don't, uh, this doesn't blow up into something bigger. Yeah, I mean, and then, of course, it's going to be blamed on dogs or coyotes or whatever. And then that, of course, the whole thing that happened recently with the child that was killed in Kentucky, there's all these people that just, um, you know, immediately, immediately, they were just like, it was a dog, it was a dog. They don't even know if it was a dog or not. And they were already defending the dog man, saying it wasn't a dog man, it wasn't a dog man, fear mongering. And they, I mean, these people went nuts just trying to, in particular, one researcher just went on a crusade immediately to try to, protect that it wasn't the dogman. Now, yeah. why they're so protective of these things and why they're so adamant that they're not, that, you know, maybe the ones where they're from are nice and friendly and they can roast marshmallows with you and, and teach you the secrets of the and universe and all this mystical stuff that goes, <laughs> I don't know what they think they do. But over here, they chase people, they kill their cattle, they murder their pets, and they attack people. They yank people from their houses. They do all kinds of stuff. They chase you know? people. I mean, they yeah. I mean, there was a guy that we got a story from not too long ago from a here town here in Texas that one of these literally grabbed him. This is he gave it to us about two weeks ago. Grabbed him out of a window of his house when he was eleven and drug him out the door, out the out the window, through the woods. And then his grandfather shot at it and it dropped him. So when you're looking at like. Th- that an incident like that it goes back to the Hernandez Ranch situation. We do have some updates on that. We're gonna get to those eventually. You got to sit there and wonder, you know, like like how how aggressive or non aggressive are these things? Nobody can say for sure, but I get tons of accounts of people that have been attacked, that have been chased. They have nightmares because of them. These things have have literally. I got a story of a woman that was pulled under the water 
not to be confused with the different one. There was there's two different ones. There was one that wasn't definitely wasn't a dog man, but there was one that was. There was a pond that, that they had behind their house. And when she was a teenager, she went into the pond and to swim. They had like a little makeshift lake. And, and this dog man, it was definitely a canine, upright canine, grabbed her and tried to pull her in. It had swam, it snuck into the water, it swam and tried to grab her. And luckily she was with three other people and they were able to get her out of the pond. You know, these things, they're not... They're not friendly. I'm just going to say that. I mean, I don't, there are a few people who have had encounters with them as being friendly. You know, they're like, oh, you know, they, 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 they protected me from something else in the woods. And all this. I, I really have a hard time with those stories because I don't, they're not real believable. I mean, most of the ones I get from hunters and from people who are out and about who've had encounters with these things, they don't, they don't appear to be friendly. They're not doing anything that tells me that I would be safe going on a picnic with one of, you know, with these things. I just wouldn't be safe. I don't, don't, I know a lot of places I could go camping and a lot of friends are like, Hey, let's go camp. Let's go camping. And I'm like, let's not because they're out there. And I don't believe if I thought they were just animals like bears, which there are black bears, there's cougars, plenty of cougars, there's wolves, there's coyotes. I would be like, okay, it's just a normal natural predator. But these things seem to have a nefarious purpose. And some people are going to cringe when I say that because they want to believe so bad that these things are just, you know, they're all good and cuddly and all that. And I've been attacked more times than I can count for putting out stories that are scary. I mean, encounters that are scary. And they're like, oh, you're just promoting fear. No, I'm promoting what is happening. That is what is happening. And I'll get into one right now. I'll get into one right now. And you guys can tell me what you think. You guys are in the studio. I'm just going to be talking to y'all. And you give me your opinion. Okay? Got you. All right. There was a lady, uh, her and her daughter were, were driving. And this happened right outside of Pflugerville here near Austin. I met her through my cousin. And she gave me a story recently, a couple months back, and this one was really scary. I mean, they were driving along and having a country road. They were driving on country road, having a night, just talking on a Sunday night, coming back from a little get-together that it happened after church. And they were going through a back road where, Anthony, I know me and you have been many times. You can take that back road to go to your mom's. And th- this thing that looked like a wolf on on two legs – was standing on the side of the road. It saw them. It, its eyes, when they, when they came around the curve, the eyes reflected yellow. And this thing decided to give chase to their car. Now, you say that in and of itself is probably not a big deal. I mean, okay, a dog will chase your car, right? But this thing got down on all fours and began to go toward their car. It got up to the back of the car and tried to reach... And, and uh, by the way, this was in a convertible. Okay, I need to make sure y'all hear that. Tried to get on the back of the car. It put the weight of the of it was pushing the car down. Now the curb, I know exactly where it's at. Yeah. Okay, it's close to where you used to work, Zane. Actually, because it's cool that you're in the studio because you remember right. where we worked. Don't, don't say it because it's it's from right. a big property from a humongous client of ours, but. It's one of the last posts you worked at before you'd moved to Connecticut. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you do. Okay, and so right, if you go out of that area and then you take a left and you go around those winding curves back up in there, going like you're going around toward Hutto, going toward his uh, auntie's mom's house, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's where it was at. This thing came out of nowhere. That makes sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because you could hear it at night making these weird noises, and I was going like, "Those are weird places. Aren't coyotes? I don't know what that is." Well, if anyone in the audience is uh, confused about where it's at, don't worry, I am too, because I have no idea either. You used to work there, Tony. You were actually the first one that started that account. I'm still me and you kind of just have pushed to tell through you the name before. You know? Oh my I know gosh, for sure. I have an idea. <laughs> it's the one that me and Nelly worked at for a while. It's close to that. Let's put it oh, that okay. Way. Yeah. Okay. I yes. think I have an idea, but yeah. gonna, I'll confirm it. Well, after. it's a big construction company. I want to get into who because they're our clients. But anyways, they're one of our biggest clients. But anyway, the, the, it, it loops around. The, it didn't happen on the, on their property or anything like that. But it, it was it's in that area. And there was a, there's a, cur- a sharp curve right there, and I know exactly where that's at. And it was by the barbed wire fence, and there's an old sign right there, and it was right there by the sign, kind of like it was hiding. 
they, they saw the legs and then, and then this thing came around the sign. They saw the eyes. It got down and immediately gave chase and it tried to get onto their car. It tried to get into the back of their car and, get, and it put pressure weight on it and it slowed the car down. They weren't going very fast. They're going about 30 and then it, it, and it caught the car and, but it, it let go and it did leave a, a mark on the car which they they have recently repainted it and got it fixed or whatever because the, the car had a, had an accident so but it wasn't oh, it was rear ended but it wasn't by that creature but there was for a long time there was marks on it I did see a photo of the of the claw marks I'm not going to put those out because that's somebody's private property they don't really want to be anybody knowing but what you know what because that's just the the mother works for a company yeah she doesn't want to witness confidence it's not even a company it's actually more important than that so i can't like give out any more information but i think anthony you do know the family but anyway this happened to somebody who's good friends with my cousin and the the car was almost it almost got into the car with him and it was snapping and and like it was you know this isn't like an encounter where and it gave chase for a while I mean, once they got down that straightaway around that sharp curve, they they kind of booked it, and it started to catch up to them as they went to the next curve. It cut through the pasture, and it continued to pursue them. So it turned their mother-daughter night into a nightmare, okay? I mean, that's just one you know occasion. They said it looked unnatural, that it looked demonic, okay? Now, a lot of people will say things look demonic, if you turn a great white shark upside down and you look at it the way it looks upside down, there have been pictures of them on Facebook it's recently. Like a witch or they devil. look like a devil, yeah. yeah. Now you can say anything looks demonic if it's if it's ugly enough or whatever. But this thing, they said it just looked unnatural. It did. It had the head of a wolf, kinda. Now that's what she said. And I mean, like, what do you mean kinda? She's like, well, wolves don't look like that. It had this really wide mouth that like just opened up really wide. Um. Not too long ago, I had a picture that was sent to me by someone who claimed that they had taken a picture of a dog, dog man. <clears throat> I had some friends look at it and they, th- there was no, me and Armando could not find any reference to this picture anywhere on Google search. And then out of nowhere, th- th- there was a source for the picture. But then when you look at the picture of this thing and you look at the body, it doesn't look right. It looked like somebody literally took that head of that creature and stuck it on a wolf's body. And then we got laughed at by some people that we were having some problems with. And they made a big joke out of it and said, oh, you guys believe that person saying that it was a dog man. Well, if you look at the, the head of this creature, it does not look like it belongs on that wolf body. It doesn't look correct. And it, this person that gave us the picture was an elderly lady in Minnesota who claimed that this thing was over her fence. And when I reached out to someone to try to show them the picture, what do you think? They made a big joke out of it and whatever. So whatever. But the bottom line is that that picture had no reference from Google. We tried searching it, all of us folks, and we couldn't find anywhere that that picture belonged. Like it wasn't from the internet. But then later on, I see that picture has been attached to what looks like a wolf body. But when you look at that picture, it doesn't look right. I still don't know what to make of that. That was very weird. But when these people described this creature to me and how wide the mouth was opening and how big and and large this thing was, it, it it's very I mean, I hear these stories all the time. I was working out with Scorpion the other night. We were at the the, the gym. There's a guy that works at the vitamin shop. And uh, I'm not going to give his name, but you know, he he told me very he, he didn't care about use the story, but I'm not going to give his name out, but he was going to school in Abilene and his roommates got chased by a bipedal wolf type creature that tried to attack their car. Now, my question is what animals out there in the animal kingdom, if this is just a natural occurring animal, run out at your car and try to attack it and get into your car and take you out? Yeah, not too many animals uh, just to go around attacking motor vehicles. So. <laughs> well, and thank goodness. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if it is an animal, at the end of the day, it's a predator. And just because you see, you know, you watch Narnia and you see the lion, <laughs> doesn't mean you go out there and start petting lions and riding them like Narnia. So yeah. this is a predator. This is a, a, a animal. If you believe that it's purely flesh and blood, it could still, it's an, it's a predator that hunts 
for its meals, meaning that it's not it's not built to be nice. You know, it's 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 built to to devour. It's built to attack. It has I large mean, teeth for a reason. It has large teeth, large claws for a reason. It has forward facing eyes. I mean, based on what I'm assuming, and forward facing eyes means that they they care about what's in front of you. Yeah, they're very wolf like, hyena like, yeah. whatever. Those are predators. The thing that I don't, I have, a, I cannot wrap my mind around is how people can be chased by them. People are attacked by them. People have all kinds of weird uh, communication with them, like telepathically. There's all these weird stories of people, little kids in particular. We handled a case where the, the people, and we actually went out there and we talked to the people and the little child, it, it just point blank was like, this thing was trying to get me to go outside. I have a ton of information from a lot of different people, a lot of people who can tell you and attest to the fact that these things, they have killed their sheep, they've killed their goats, they've killed their their cattle, they've chased their children. I mean, they have attacked people, they've broken into houses, they've been, I mean, it is it is crazy, dude. Like, they've gotten on their roof, you know, they've laid things out in the road for people to, to, to wreck I got a story out of Tennessee. Some people got wrecked, and they and I can get into that. They their their van got attacked for two hours by something that looked like a bipedal wolf, you know. And then and then and then these people are sitting over here talking about like, okay, they're not going to hurt you if you don't hurt them. They're not. Pre- they're just predators. This and that. And predators, but but like they they do things that go beyond predation. I don't know of animals that go out of their way to lay things in a road to make you wreck so that they can peel your, your car back like a sardine can and pull you out of it. Well, I mean, they're, they have like a sinister cleverness to them too. Cause they Very. can, they can play nice to a point to where it like to a child to deceive it into believing it's just a big cuddly teddy bear and snatch it away. And then just because they understand that being all mean and scary will probably scare the child and have her have it, uh, the, the, the child run away and talk to the parents. Instead, so they, they play on nice so that they could gain the trust of the child so that it would be easier to take it away. And that's something that a regular predator can't do. It's something no. with something with mm-hmm. high intellect, but very uh, devious and uh, malicious intent. And it's, it's, it's a cleverness that's uh, it's a very a sinister, quality. sinister cl- uh, cleverness to it. Yeah. And, you know, that that's why if you do encounter one that's being on nice, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's being nice for your best intent, mm-hmm. that it's trying to be your buddy. And Sasquatch is the same. I mean, I look at it the same way. I mean, th- there are many people who have all these like magical Smurf village encounters with Sasquatch, they claim. But there are just as many that get chased like the guy up in Washington who got chased while he was trying to read a meter at a house out in the country. And this thing chased him all the way to the highway. I mean, he almost ran out into the highway to keep, you know, it turned his truck over. The, the guy that had the one that, that threw a rock at yeah, him, him and his say, kid like, and almost killed them. If, and it yeah. bedded itself into a tree. That, that story sticks with me because it's like, <clears throat> it's just so, the power behind the, of what, what is described. It would have it taken a head it off. Yeah, it would have demolished a person. Yeah, I, I had some friends that were in the San Gabriel River that's swerping down that these Sasquatch were throwing small boulders down into the water trying to crush them, trying to kill them. And uh, then just, just, just down the road from there in San Gabriel, these these other people that I knew years ago, they got chased by what they they thought at the time were Bigfoot. But when I when I investigated recently and started questioning them about what they looked like, they had wolf heads, you know. And they said, well, they looked like they had snouts. But the people that got the boulders thrown down on them, they they said it looked very much like like the Sasquatch. How you they described Sasquatch like had on um, a human looking face, didn't have a snout, and very big and hairy, large, about seven foot tall. Two of them, but they were they were rather lanky. They weren't real muscular, very much like Bigfoot. But you know, in that same area, there's Bigfoot, there's Dogman. Then we get stories of these weird cat type creatures. I don't know what they are, but I don't think that any of these things are out there to play with you. I mean, the the, the woods is not the zoo. You know, you're not going to go out into the woods and walk around, and people are you know, and just think that everything is fine because if something attacks you, it's fair game. And so whether you believe that it's flesh and blood or you think it has a spiritual quality to it, either way, it's really not something that people should be going out and finding out because you could end up dead and people get hurt. And I know a lot of people who've had ethereal encounters with these things. They will run into them and they will be basically like specters. They will disappear. But, you know, I've heard the physical 
flesh and blood hardcoreists lately, they, they are, they're always saying that the spiritual people are attacking them. In my experience, it's not really the case. What I'm seeing is the physical people, because I've been in dogman groups and different, and different, you know, where that was just the norm. Everybody got attacked that didn't go along with the flesh and blood theory. And I got chastised because I said that there could be both. You know, I think that there's two different things going on. And just for that opinion, I got attacked and by the, denying by the flesh and blood people because <laughs> those that, that claim that they're flesh and blood, they're real hardcore, uh that that they, 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 they don't hurt anybody, a bunch of them are anyway. They 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 don't they don't, they don't mess with nobody. They're just an animal that's that, that just happens to look like a man running around. Now see, on that point, that's what I wanted to ask you. Now, what do we call these exactly? Because there's a certain level of intelligence here that's kind of separating them from like a normal animal. Things that have self-awareness and they're very like, what's the word? Like conscientious. Yeah. Like yeah. it seems like that's the kind of thing that we would place would between ourselves and, and, and a human. And like another human, animal. Yeah. Right. So then yeah. what do we specify these as are these animals because this is why i lean towards more of the like ethereal because i've only seen one once at least i think that's what it was and it was in new orleans it was brief and it wasn't scary it wasn't this it wasn't that but it just seemed very out of the norm and i didn't see it ever again it, it didn't bother me ever again and it it just didn't leave that kind of impression so it's it it's hard for me to kind of come to grips with like just calling it like a normal animal because I don't think it's a normal animal. Because it, it doesn't, doesn't make look sense normal for right. one thing. I mean, it doesn't act like a normal animal would. Well, you wanna you wanna you wanna just go ahead and tell your story. Yeah, so tell your we'll, story. Yeah, we'll so get we all that. get an idea and we can all you know talk. We can about get it. a feel for what you're talking about. Yeah. So about three or four years ago, um, I was in New Orleans and uh, I was walking back from a job I had downtown in the French Quarter, and. It's right off of uh, Saint Rock Cemetery. If anyone's on Google Maps, you can actually look at the map and 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 see the wall that I'm going to be talking about. There's a large stone wall that separates the uh, the uh, cemetery, and it has very old architecture. And I was walking back. It was maybe three in the morning, and I looked over the stone gate, and there looked like a large, shadowy. I don't know, like large shadowy like visage of like what looked like what 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 you would consider like a wolf man and just kind of like walking walking among like the graves and i had told somebody about this maybe a day or two after and they said that that's a common thing because i guess an old creole th the old creole teachings the werewolves in in like the cemetery are kind of like guardians, guardians of, the, of dead. the dead. Right. So, so for, it was a Lugaroo. Right. Yeah, Lugaroo, yeah. So for you to see something kind of like that prowling around wasn't like very uncommon, but that was a very long time ago. This is just old, you know, folk stories, but that is the one time that I did see one. And that's kind of why I had that leaning in the first place was because I've never seen one in the physical so much. So as I've seen that, whatever that was. And I just have to like assume that that's what that was because it doesn't make any sense. What else is far like above that stone wall? Like I said, it's uh, St. Rock in North Germany. You can look it up on uh, Google Maps. There's a large stone wall and I want to estimate it like it's about six and a half feet tall. And this thing was well at least a foot over that. Yeah. Just just, just walking around. Well, like th it there's a very famous case that, that Linda Godfrey writes about in one of her books where this thing was like digging near a cemetery and a security guard, you know, came up on it. and Yeah. Yeah, and it spoke, uh, according to the guard, which th th this happened like I think it was like in the 1930s or something like that. But that case is is very odd. But I mean, I get lots of weird stories from all different walks of life. People that that tell you stories. I've had transformation stories. People that claim that they, the guys that did the pest control out on the lake, that comes to mind. I get stories all the time. Now here here's one, and I'll tell you. This, I, I don't know what to make of this. I know there was a a dad, his wife, and two children. The children were not little kids. The, the, the son was like 11, and the daughter was a teenager. She was like 15. And the, 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 the mom and the son were in the back of the vehicle asleep. They were in like an SUV. 
And this happened in, I want to say Tennessee or Kentucky, or Kentucky, but I'm not 100% sure. I got to go back and look. That doesn't sound right to me. Anyways, I think it was either Kentucky or Tennessee. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Missouri. It was in Missouri. They were driving through Missouri in the Ozarks, okay? And the the daughter woke up and screamed and grabbed the steering wheel while the dad was driving. Everybody had been asleep for a couple of hours, according to him, and she swerved the vehicle. Just then, this big brown, hairy, wolf-looking creature hit the side of their vehicle and then they, they swerved and it just kind of slid across the side of it. And then they kept going. They almost lost control of the vehicle, but they got control back of it. And they kept, and now they didn't speak. They didn't say anything. Like they just, it was just like, boom, this thing comes out of the woods. It was dusk. There was another vehicle that was a few car lengths ahead of them that I maybe, I guess, didn't see it. Or maybe they did. They don't know. But they swerved. They went into the uh, oncoming lane. There was nobody coming, thank goodness. And then they swerved back, got control of the vehicle, and then they didn't speak about it. And the daughter was crying. The dad was trying to console her. It was a long ways to the next town. They finally got to the to, to a place where they were going to stop. He asked her if they, she wanted to talk about it. She said no. They got to their hotel, the motel that they were at. They went to sleep. The next day, they were at breakfast, and it was just him and the daughter. And so he asked her what that was all about and why she woke up and swerved like that, grabbed the steering wheel. She had been dreaming. She was dreaming that this evil, what she called an evil werewolf creature, was waiting in the woods and hiding. And it was waiting for them to come by so that it could attack them. And so when they got to that point in the road, she woke up out of this this sleep because she said she said that something some sort of like entity okay a good entity according to her like a like a angelic type creature right woke her up and said wake up now and when she did she instinctively reached for the steering wheel she don't know why or how but she said that if she wouldn't have done that she thinks that this thing would have like come right into the vehicle launched through the door and launched through the yeah, yeah. And, and and yanked one of them out and she, for some reason, thought that it was going for her little brother who was behind her. And she didn't know why, but she just felt like that's what it was. And when she woke up, now maybe this is just a case of like serious intuition. She just felt like there was something going on. That was about to happen. That yeah. was about to happen and she woke up. Maybe she has some sort of psychic powers. I don't know. But it was very disturbing for the dad. And then later she told the mom. The little brother talked to her. This happened years ago, but she said that, you know, several years later, the little brother claimed that he had been having nightmares about a wolf-like creature that was stalking him. And so that that being said, I mean, you know, what what was that? Like, how do you explain that? Now, she feels like it was demonic. It right. was completely evil. It was a demonic entity that was a werewolf-looking creature that launched itself toward the vehicle and because they swerved, it didn't get a good angle and it just kind of like grazed, hit oh, and yeah. grazed it. Yeah. They uh, shoulder you, rolled. How do you explain it? Ambush predator. Man. It sounds like it's, it's ambushing the, these, these, this poor family. This one I feel might be a little bit more physical. I feel like this one might have tensions of, you know. Well, physical, yeah. But I mean, is it purely physical though? That's the big debate. That's the big question of what's going on. Is like I really don't think so. Personally, I just can't because they just disappear. They just up and disappear. Yeah, right. I mean, I don't know if no one can ever find a trace of these. Are I mean. purely physical because it's it's difficult to get a tracking on them. It's difficult to like truly get a group of them. So I think that they have an ability. You know, I remember how we talked last time about how back in the day. If we brought a lighter to these people back in the olden times, it would be we were considered gods or wizards or you know mystical mages. But you know because it's just technology to us that it sounds a bit different. You know, so I mean that's why I think it might just be some. So who knows if it's just that they have something that we just haven't figured out yet. Yeah, and it might just be because we don't we haven't figured it out. We consider it a supernatural ability when it might just be that they they just they they have something inherent in them. Or they have something that they have with them that allows them to just disappear like that. You know what and, this reminds me of a lot of is is like the jinn, 
when when like I think of Jin, this is the kind of thing that I think of because they're sometimes physical, they're sometimes not, and some of them are neutral. Like they don't really have malicious intent, but some are. Explain to people what those are. The Jin is like a might not know. The 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 Jin are like a the Middle Arab, Eastern the Arab, the Middle Eastern, yeah. the Persian, the Arabs, and the and, Kurdish. They all believe in that. Yeah. Like they're kind of uh they're called the fire spirits. Right. They're like before humans. They're made from smokeless flame, but they're shapeshifters. Right. And they're tricksters and they can be whatever they want to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Somebody, but like humans, they're not all inherently. They're either. not all inherently. Right. There's yeah. some good ones. They have their own religion. Like, they yeah. have their own Well, there, there's some beliefs. people that, that have told me that they believe that these uh, dogmen or whatever you want to call them are tulpas. That they were made from the, right. the, the minds yeah. of man and what is what we are afraid of. And that they have Personified. they have taken a physical uh, they've taken on a physical trait. See, see, that's the route I'm more likely to to take myself personally mm-hmm. because I think with all that I've read and just with my own beliefs, like that, that just makes the most sense to me. Mm-hmm. Well, you think you think that I really oh, feel that they're not no. like they're not like inherently just a physical creature. They're not like just a being that it's like you can go into a science book and you can label them and put them under a you know type of guinness or something like i really believe that it's a really like a mind seeing an energy and it just kind of manifests itself that way and then once yeah, I mean, the I believe, occurrence is over it's just it's just over yeah i believe that thoughts have power so i mean that that makes a lot of sense to me to you know I, I mean, what, our thoughts created them yeah i mean yeah. so i mean it, it wouldn't be too i understand like uh i know that sometimes I feel like if I have a better day, it's because, you know, my day is based on how I'm thinking of that day, how I started out, how I wake up and how I, I, I prepare myself for it. And then, like my, my thoughts dictate how my day continues. I mean, I don't know. I, I, it might just be me that feels it, but I, I feel like a lot of times if I let myself dwell in, you know, how I'm feeling that day and it, if it's a bad feeling, then it's going to dictate how everything occurs to me and it's just going to keep getting worse and worse and worse. Because of of this, yeah. self-fulfilling prophecy, self exactly. yeah. self-fulfilling prophecy. Let me ask you so. a question. To- Tony has talked to me before Zane about an encounter he had with a what he thinks was like a demonic witch-looking creature, but it was spiritual. And right. It happened on one of his job sites. Mm-hmm. When you saw this creature that you saw, do you think that that's what it could have been? Like a like a, a witch? Was it demonic or I didn't well, feel that like cemetery it was... is known for having witch. Yeah. A, a witch. Yeah. I mean, I don't. When I saw it, I personally didn't feel any sort of negative anything. I, there was no negative connotation. It was shocking. It was surprising. It was just there. But it was just doing But was it, what did it look feel- like a shadow? It did. It, it just looked like a black, tall figure. And it was like seven and some change feet tall. Mm-hmm. And it was just kind of meandering around a bunch of graves. And you can't, like... I couldn't see the other half of it because. Do you feel like if what, you would have gotten closer to it, it could have attacked you? Uh, no, uh-uh. no. You just think it was just there. Like I feel like that even if it had saw me and I didn't physically see it turn to me or like look at me, but I feel like it was just doing a job, like and it really off? didn't care that I was there at all, or like it, it, if it could, you yeah. know. I really believe that it was exactly what the old folklore was and it was just protecting the graves of mm-hmm. you know i mean that's yeah, just what that, that's now what that's a creo f- of folklore that's not a native american now i've had yeah. people argue with me that the native Cajun. americans believe that they're all guardians of the graves that's not necessarily nah. true mm-hmm. um of course we do know a couple of navajo and yeah. they don't believe that at all Absolutely they believe not. that they're skinwalkers yeah no that's more geographical yeah I, and it's all depends and then of course i know the i know most I'm, people I'm don't nominee. know too that louisiana is a lot older than a lot of people realize. Well, yeah, because the Spanish know. actually founded that, and then right. the French came, and, uh, and of yeah. course the French had a little bit of history, the Louisiana Purchase, because yep. Napoleon needed money for his wars, mm-hmm. and so, of course, he sold it to us for very cheap. I don't remember exactly, like a million dollars or something. Yeah, yeah. No, so we bought this huge swath of territory, and immediately we took it over from France. Yeah. So those French settlements in New Orleans were there for a long time. I mean, I mean longer yep. than Texas was settled. Absolutely. Yeah, who, who hasn't heard about the French Quarter still? The France. French Quarter, yeah. And the French influence there for a long, long time, um, they, they moved down into that area because they lost the French and Indian War. You know, and then of course in Nova Scotia, which is literally New Scotland, is what it means. Yeah, there was the the, the British were like the Scottish wanted to settle, and the English were like, "Well, here, take this piece of crap land <laughs> over here in the north, up in Canada." But first, you got to fight all the French and drive them out. 
so the, Scot- the Scottish were like, oh, here we go. <laughs> so that pretty much always getting the, the, the short end of the stick from the English. So they ended up driving them out. So a lot of those, the, the last of the French settlers came all the way from Canada and ended up uh, in that area to be with their other French brethren who were already there. I heard the Scottish people are pretty tough. I don't know if that's... The Scots. The Scots yeah. are very yeah. tough. I heard that they're... they're the very Irish fighting. are tough too, but they... they uh, I think that the Irish would rather drink than fight, but they'll do both. Yeah. Definitely yeah. do both. I they, they definitely enjoy <laughs> both. Definitely part. I feel like. But back to this dog man thing. We were talking about France and France. Okay. So I will give you one uh, from France. Everybody's heard of the beast of Gévaudan. As Have you not heard of that? I don't know if you guys in the studio have heard of it. I have not. Okay. The beast of Gévaudan, a lot of people believe that it was a prehistoric hyena. There's all kinds of different stories about it. It killed lots and lots of people. I'm not going to get into a dissertation about that, but <clears throat> there was someone that sent me a story not too long ago about a, a mirror that ha- in, a, in a farmhouse in France or whatever. He got back with me a few months back and told me that he had someone that his cousin had married that lived not too far from that house. <clears throat> now, that house had an entity that was attached to a mirror that was coming out of the mirror and that it was doing different things. And I talk about that in one of the episodes and I cannot even tell you which episode that was, but this, this individual's got me in touch with a female friend of his or a cousin's wife, I guess she would be and a friend, I guess. Yeah. But she's his cousin's wife. And she had an encounter with a creature that would be kind of close to that same area about, I think 40 miles from there. And this creature was for all intents and purposes, a gigantic wolf like creature that looked to her like a prehistoric creature, but it had a supernatural quality to it because it could disappear and reappear. So at the first encounter with this creature was in the barn. They heard a bunch of squealing. They had pigs. They went out to the barn, started with her grandfather. This was back in the, early 1900s, the grandfather had gone out there and he heard squealing of the pigs or whatever. And there was this gigantic creature who was holding one of the hogs down, a gigantic uh, sow was holding her down and was just chewing it up. It was already dead. The front, what should have been limbs, looked like arms, hairy arms with talons that had clamped onto it. And it was chewing this uh, hog up to pieces. And the other hogs were all scared and they were all huddled into the corner and another one was laying there dead. A smaller pig was laying there dead and it had already been chewed up. And this thing saw him. It was gray. It was completely gray. Uh, Looked like a wolf, but it was not a wolf. And it had the upper body of a man, basically a werewolf looking creature. And that it was eating this hog and it had already devoured a smaller one. So this thing had quite the appetite she estimated it to be about several hundred pounds. You know, I had to do that by the metric system, of course, folks. <laughs> we have the, right. the only country that doesn't use the metric system is us because whatever. So anyways, there was this hog that was being being torn into and it was being eaten. That was the first encounter. He shot at it. The bullets from his rifle went through the top of the shoulder. He knows he hit it. He saw what looked like dust or something fly off of its shoulder. Some kind of splatter. Some sort yeah. of splatter, but it wasn't blood. And it didn't phase it, and it didn't stop. Well, that's very odd in and of itself. He fired again, and it became annoyed. Then it lost its attention to the hog and jumped through the fence and went at him. Now, when I asked her what the grandfather had said about jumping through the fence, it went through the fence. Like, there were these three wooden planks. It went through it. Like its body literally could dematerialize and went through the fence and charged at this farmer. He ran back into the house and they hunkered down. It stalked around the property, making noise, howling, growling through the night. And that was the end of it for the first encounter. But it plagued the family off and on for years. And there was no really, there was no real discernible pattern to it. It would just come and it would do what it did. It would kill an animal devour it. They would find their livestock periodically killed. It didn't wipe them out. Like the Hernandez ranch, they were saying that that at one point these, these dog men had come in and they had come down in a pack and they had wiped out an entire herd of cattle. That's not what happened in this case. 
it was like a once in a blue moon thing. They had geese and they would find one, you know, they would find them like gone. Like they just, they would disappear, you know, they would find feathers and stuff. They knew that it was this one particular creature. It was always the same. It was a weird looking uh, entity. It had been shot several times to no avail. It didn't do anything. It didn't stop it. It didn't do anything. Now she grew up growing up when she was a young girl on this farm. It was her grandparents' farm, and she lived with her grandparents with her mother and her because she didn't her dad died young or whatever. And so she he was actually killed in war. But she grew up with these grandparents, and the grandparents warned her about this thing. Very, very same, the loop guru, as they called it. It was a loop guru. It was known as a supernatural entity, and it was brought down upon them as a curse. According to them, it was a familial curse. Somebody had cursed them and conjured this thing up. It had physical traits, and it could do physical things. And while it was in this realm, as they said, it would eat. Right. And it would kill people. Now, her grandfather's brother was a victim of this creature, supposedly. Now, of course, there's a lot of speculation about the Beast of Gévaudan that this thing supposedly killed, uh, I don't know if somebody can look it up while we're here in the studio. Uh, I believe they said it killed over 200 people, but there's different stories. Like uh, when I was talking to her, she she claimed that the Beast had killed over 200 people. I don't know what the official numbers are. I believe Gévaudan is G-E-V Don. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, it started as G E V A. I think uh, was it U D O N something like that. Jevodon. I think if somebody can look it up, people at home, you can look it up and you can start correcting me as I know you will. <laughs> uh, and you guys, uh, tell me what you think about that creature. But this thing, this thing, eventually she saw it, and it did chase her out from across the barn. There was a barn that had where you could go from one side to the other where that both sides open up. Mm-hmm. There's one of those where there's like a little like a like a, a walkway in the right. middle. And then there's animals on either side. Yeah. And I have it if you wanna I don't want to interrupt you, but it, it says uh they it, there's two hundred and ten attacks. Two hundred, there you go. No, but there was only a hundred people killed. Hundred people killed, yeah. Yeah. She claimed when when I, we were talking that there were two hundred people that were killed and, and like I didn't I had not planned on telling this story tonight, but then we got into the whole Zane's encounter. Yeah. And yeah. the Louisiana thing and then the French connection. So I'm kinda throwing that out there. So I was, folks, I, I was going to go back and do the research and make sure I had the numbers right, but we got into this. This show is very organic. It just kind of grows, and we just go on we go and talk. Flow. We go with the flow. So we're talking about that. The Beast of Jevedon, and and so what ended up happening, eventually this beast was killed with silver. A magistrate got the idea to shoot it with a silver bullet. Now here's what this woman claims happened. They talked to a local clergyman. He said that this was a demonic entity that could manifest itself as a physical being and that the only way to get rid of it was through prayers and they had to use some sort of silver. What she claims they did was they took the carcass of a cult that had been killed. It had been chased off of the, away from the cult or whatever. And the, so they took this dead animal and they, they laid it out in the pasture and they tried experimenting with different things. They put silver coins in it to see if it would, would, and so it never came back. It never touched it. Same thing happened with a goat. A goat was killed. It was dev- half devoured, left half devoured. It typically would drag animals out into the pastures and it would eat them. You know, as they would see them, they would see it in the tree line. And sometimes it would climb up into trees. It did very physical things. Yeah but you couldn't kill it and it would run if there was enough people shooting at it. So I think that there was a pain factor there, right? but they couldn't do anything as far as like ending its life. They tried doing d- different things like putting silver within these <sighs> animals carcasses that it had gone to eat and that they thought it, made, it would come back. Right. They put a half eaten goat on a fence. It didn't, that, that's the second one. It didn't take the bait. It didn't, it never touched anything that had anything to do with silver. Now, you can say, well, maybe that's because it wasn't hungry. Maybe well, it wasn't, maybe it was, th- it, it was smart and it knew it was a trap. But what ultimately ended up happening was at point blank range, her uncle shot it in the face with silver buckshot. BBs that were made of silver that they had used family 
melted down family silver, like silverware. Right. Turned them into BBs, which cost them a pretty penny to do and a pretty penny to, to get made, expensive. whatever, very yeah. expensive. And that when they tried shooting at it with a silver slug, it didn't tumble correctly and it didn't, it, you could not aim it. So it would fly off and just, you know, whatever. The, 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 there was no way to shoot it. Yeah. So they eventually, they, they, they tracked it down to what was a, essentially a lair, which was a small cave right on the outside of the property. This is what she told me. And that they eventually went into that lair with six men and one of them shot it at point blank range with buckshot that was silver, peppered with silver. Now it wasn't all silver, right? but it, it did literally, mm -hmm. according to her, she didn't see this, but the men that were there, one of them was a local constable, whatever, it dissolved. When it was shot in the face and it did enough to kill it, I guess, mm -hmm. my thought is maybe that the silver works just like a regular bullet would. You know what I mean? It disrupts the energy, I'm assuming. It does and something, it's kind of, yeah, and yeah. it breaks whatever the, the electromagnetic pulse. I yeah. don't know what it does. I mean, whatever silver is a conductor. Is. And so it, it, it dissolved it. It literally dissolved and turned to ash. That's what she claimed. Not once in all the times it was ever shot, uh, another time, according to her, someone hurled a pitchfork at it and hit it in the back. They said it had a very prominent tail that was always sticking up. It was a very strange looking creature. It was all gray. But she said that it that somebody threw it and hit it with a pitchfork and it just ran and there was no blood. Props to that dude. Yeah, never, never, <laughs> never. Uh, I guess you, you throw whatever you have handy when it shows up. Yeah, I mean. According to someone that was working in a field that was attacked, his arm was taken off by it. He did manage to hit it with a sickle, you know, that you use to harvest wheat, stuff like that. It stuck it in the shoulder with a sickle. Once again, no blood. It, it got it off of him. Um, but there was no killing this thing. So my question is, what was that? If the story that she told me is to be believed, you know, what 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 was it? Just just to like the beast of Jevodan, it was it was killed by silver. What what is there? I mean, what I'm like what what is it? I mean, if this story is to be believed, France is steeped in werewolf legends and stories. So is Germany. I mean, those places and the, the stories are always the same. You got to the birthplace. You got to use silver to that kill area. Them. Well, yeah. Well, just the reason we have all this metal on the wall, I believe it to be the same reason. I mean, just in my belief, you know. You're talking about the metal on my wall. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Uh, if you don't know, the uh, studio has a lot of uh, iron and steel daggers and weaponry. Yeah, we've decorated the it. wall. And they say that. It breaks up the charges. It breaks up, like, yeah, spiritual energy. And I guess, and this is just tying more into my own belief, of course, but since I believe they're mostly a spiritual being, then it would make sense that being peppered with something silver, silver being, I don't know, that j just that magical material that for whatever reason mm -hmm. will fight off spirits or you know, move or, or, or mess up energies that, I mean, I guess that, that would kind of make sense. Well, but let me ask you this. Th this thing did not, re did not revert to a man. It didn't become a man. It wasn't like it was a, a human that had turned into right. a werewolf or anything like that. It was just a uh, creature that, that was, that when it was killed, it turned to ash. I mean, she claims that when the, when the creature died, she was 14. Yeah. When they finally killed it. There's a story of the devil's backbone, and I'll tell you. And this, to me, is a, it's a little different. It is a goat man entity. And this isn't a goat man episode, but there was a story that was in one of Burt Wall's books. And when the, this, the, there was predation that was going on from the livestock, people, a guy's sheep was killed, a guy's cows were killed. I'd heard this story before from a rancher that lived out there. He claimed to have lived through this. And I met him through a guy that used to work at Whataburger, <laughs> that Scorpion used to work with. But they, they told me this story, and he said that this this uh, eventually they they tracked it down. Several ranchers from around that area got together. They tracked this thing down in the dead of winter to a cave, and they found, and it was a goat. They didn't say it was a goat man. They said it was a goat. That it, it was on all fours, and it was just a gigantic goat. I do believe they said it was black. Now, when they killed, when they shot it, because it had been shot several times, but it, when, when it was doing its predation, when people would catch it, it looked like a humanoidal goat. 
like right. a, a goat man, like the head of a goat, literally the head of a goat, right? With the the upper body of a man, with with white fur or a gray or a grayish black blackish gray fur, and goat legs. When they eventually tracked it to its lair, it was just a goat. It was sitting down in a sleeping position, and it was it was a goat. Nice. They did eventually come up with the idea to kill it with silver, and they did shoot it with silver. And according to the story, it began to morph into a humanoidal goat that people would see, then turned to ash. Did not become a human, but it went from being a goat to a goat man, and then it turned gray, and then it became ash. And Kind of like watching stages of yeah, like and the evolution. It, it, it just de-evolved into ash. Into, yeah, dust. Dust. Well. So what is to be made of that? I don't know. That's that's a bizarre one. Yeah. I mean, I've, yeah. I mean, so yeah. I've never heard of some that's like de-evolving weird. like that. And it now, makes me question all goats I see now. I look at threads, and if if I hadn't been given the thread of this story, then I was kind of like putting that one on the back burner, you know, because I'm like, what is that? Yeah. What can cause something to be hit with silver right. and turn to ash? A human being, people take colloidal silver. I mean, you can right, yeah, you can yeah. ingest it, and people there, good there's people you. that believe that putting it in milk and you can keep the milk from spoiling because it's antimicrobial. You don't turn to ash if you consume silver. Now, if you consume enough of it, you can turn blue. Right. <laughs> turn into <Yeah>. a Smurf. <laughs> but so folks at home, that's all the time we have today. And we will continue this discussion. Thanks for listening. Thanks for hearing me rant and give your history lessons and all the other bull crap that Thanks goes for on. Zane for joining us. Thanks for to Zane for joining us. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Anybody that wants to uh, send us messages. Don't, because we don't want to hear from you. Yeah, I'm just kidding. We love to hear from you folks, and 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 th- that's that's all the time we have for today. We would like for you to like and subscribe, get leave comments, and and let me know what you think, and uh, give me your opinions on this, and give me your thoughts on what's uh, what what these things are. Like, how do you feel about the whole dogman debate? Good, bad, evil, flesh, blood, spirit. I don't know. I don't know. I know that they do physical things. But I'm not 100% sold that they are all physical. And once again, um, try to keep it, you know, uh, how do you say it? Try, be nice in the comments. Don't be argumentative and don't try to attack anyone in the comments. Be be very, if you want to have discussions, we we want, wanna, uh, we want that. We want everyone to be able to talk about their own views in a safe spot. But we don't want anyone to be attacked and feel like uh, it's not, you know, a place where you can come and discuss your ideals. Yeah, and another thing too, we have a really loyal following of people. I mean, they're really loyal. I noticed that when someone sends a really negative comment, two or three people will jump on them. <laughs> and yeah. then and then we end up having to just take the comment down. So you're really wasting your time. If you're gonna leave a really ugly comment about stuff and you know, just it's just gonna get taken down and you're gonna be attacked. So don't do that. And if you have one that's not positive, but it's just neutral and you want to give your opinion, by all means do. Nobody's going to attack you for your opinion or your belief. But if you're going to leave one like, if you, you guys suck and blah, 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 well, you're going to get people that are going to do something. Because I do have a very loyal following and I appreciate all of you that are very loyal. Shout out to a lot of my uh, my really good friends and listeners you know that, that have been very supportive you know, been always in, since the beginning. Yeah, there's several people that are just very, very good, very loyal, and I appreciate it. And so, anyways, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for let it, uh, listening to us talk about dog man werewolves. So, wherever you're from, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, whatever uh, type of tea or coffee you're drinking, good night. <laughs>